I am so utterly overwhelmed with one more day of quadriplegia, one more day of somebody giving me a bed bath, wiping my drippy nose, brushing my teeth, feeding me breakfast. It's just, Jesus, yeah. I do not have the strength for this anymore. But you do, and I can do all things through you. After 55 years of pain and suffering, Johnny Erickson Tata is still living a life of faithful triumph. Next. Hello, welcome to Life Today. I'm Sheila Walsh, and oh, I'm so glad that you are tuning in for this program today because I have the privilege of having a conversation with one of one of the women I love and admire most on the entire planet. You know her too, and you love her, and so it's just a joy to welcome Johnny Erickson Tada to Life Today. Johnny, hello, my friend. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that word, my friend, because Sheila, everything you just said, I'm going to mirror it right back to you. You are a precious friend, and uh, I love serving the Lord Jesus and the kingdom with you. I do, too. And you know one of the things I've always loved about you? Almost every single time that we've been together, you always say, let's sing. Has that always been part <laughs> of your life? Well, Sheila, every time I see you, I want to sing, cheer up the saints of God, she have nothing to, to worry about. about. <laughs> I know. <laughs> one, of your, one of your favorite, uh, what, that's a Scottish ditty, I don't know. But <laughs> I remember the time, Sheila, you and I were at uh, uh, Billy Graham's memorial service. Mm. And, of course, it was packed, jammed, crowded. But yeah. when I arrived on the parking lot, there you were about five rows over, and you came running across the parking lot. And the first words you said were, Johnny, can we sing a hymn? <laughs> and do you remember what we sang? I would think we would have sung, when we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. There yeah. you go. Amen, friend. Amen. I was very excited to see that there's um, this timeless classic, your book, Johnny, an unforgettable story, is getting an update. But I want, for the two people on the earth who don't know your story, do you mind just giving us a little brief where it started? Sheila, it was um, almost 55 years ago. Next month, uh, July, it'll be 55 years ago. Oh, wow. 50. Yeah. Yeah. 55 years ago. Uh, that I took that really silly dive into shallow water and and didn't check the bottom. You know, you're a teenager. You think you can, you know, do anything you want to do, sure. and you don't really appreciate the risks you take. And then suddenly, through a reckless dive into shallow water, you crunch your spinal column and sever it and become, a, you know, a quadriplegic, no hands, uh, use of hands or legs, and... And suddenly, your life is just broken. What can I say? It's absolutely down for the count, decimated, falling face flat on the floor, broken. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just catapulted into depression and, and couldn't understand why a good God would allow something so awful to happen to such a young Christian. In yeah. fact, a Christian who just what months earlier had asked for a closer walk with you, Lord Jesus. I would wow. love to be drawn closer to you. And, and then I end up breaking my neck. And you know, Sheila, I, forgive me, but I think that's one of the reasons I resonate with you because you understand brokenness. Yeah. I remember something you once said, oh, and correct me, I don't have the right words. You talked about when you were in that psychiatric institution, you were flat face down on the floor and you said something to the effect that God met me on the floor. Yeah, yeah. I, I just bet every one of our viewers have been there, mm. or maybe they are there, and there's nothing more sweet, tender, near, real, than finding the God of the universe down on the floor with you. I know, 
or sitting next to you in the chemo chair at in the cancer clinic or mm -hmm. in the rehab center learning how to write and type on a computer keyboard with a stick between your teeth. I mean, there's nothing more wonderful than seeing Jesus in your utter, utter weakness. And um, so being with you today and talking about this 45th anniversary edition of the Johnny book means so much. Maybe it's timeless. I think you used that word timeless. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's timeless because it's everybody's story, isn't it, yeah. Sheila? But you helped me understand that because I was speaking once at one of your retreats and we were just grabbing a moment backstage, just the two of us. And you said something to me that I have never forgotten. You said, um, we are both handicapped, but it's just easier for you to forget that you are. You know, you made this profound statement that because of your physical limitations, you don't get to forget. And honestly, Johnny, I think I that think was a marker in my life. A, yeah, thank you. And that, I think that is a good thing that I am forced daily to recognize my weaknesses. Um, I wake up in the morning, and I've told you this before. I. I am so utterly overwhelmed with one more day of quadriplegia, one more day of somebody giving me a bed bath, doing my toileting routines, wiping my backside, wiping my drippy nose, brushing my teeth, feeding me breakfast. It's just, Jesus, yeah. I do not have the strength for this anymore. But you do, and I can do all things through you as you strengthen me. It's my mantra, yeah. and I think it is anybody. It should be anybody's mantra. It's a, that wonderful verse from Philippians. We cannot survive on our own strength, and so God is constantly um, forcing weakness and disappointment or uh, immense difficulties upon us so that we might see that the weaker we are, the harder we have to lean on Jesus. and. I don't know, the harder we lean on him, the stronger we discover him to be. And that is such a good thing. That, that's kind of the story of the Johnny book. Maybe that's why it's, uh, it's still around after all these years, 45 years. Have you updated at all? Have you added any of the more recent parts of your story? Yes, thanks for asking, Sheila. I did. Um, lots of new photos, of yeah. course, but I uh, included a, a lengthy epilogue and a, a closing chapter to update the reader on my two battles against stage three cancer, of which I still um, am dealing with that um, cancer. But honestly, harder than cancer and even harder than my quadriplegia is uh, the battle I deal with chronic pain. Uh, before we went on the air today, I was confiding in you that, man, I need prayer because uh, pain is just, uh, it's just, just so overwhelming. And on, honestly, Sheila, there are so many times at night, I, I've learned to talk to my pain. Uh, maybe that's my way of defanging it so it does not terrorize me. You know, I've I've familiarized myself. I've familiarized myself with its nuances. And so I understand it. I, 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 I know what it is. I've had it so long. And I say to it, pain, you, you think you're going to crush me. But 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 says, though I am hard pressed on all sides, I am not crushed. So you're not going to crush me. I'm going to walk into the middle of you, fiery pain, as though I were walking into the furnace of Nebuchadnezzar. And I just bet, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, I'm going to find the, the one like the Son of God uh, walking beside me. And it's my way, like I said, of defanging yeah. this wicked serpent of uh, pain. And in it, strangely enough, I find the sweetness of the Lord Jesus. Why is it, Sheila, that God always chooses to show us his his lovely face in the midst of such overwhelming hardship. I don't know. That's just the way it is. When we think of our Savior who was, uh, you know, he hung on his cross like butchered meat yeah. on a hook in a slaughterhouse. I mean, that, that's what Jesus looked like, according to what Isaiah 52. People didn't even recognize him as... Uh, human likeness. And yet, um, so I, I think that's how we come to know him best when we suffer in some measure, small measure, as he 
once suffered on his cross. But I have to say, Johnny, more than anybody that I've known in my lifetime, you have stewarded your suffering in a holy way. It has impacted how you reach out to the world through Wheels for the World. But tell us a little bit about I know that we have three homes in Ukraine. We've had them for 20 years at life. But, but you've been reaching out to those in Ukraine who are struggling with disability. I can't even imagine. Well, let me, let me paint a little bit of preface to that ministry that we're having in Ukraine right now. Um, when you suffer and when you experience the grace of the Lord Jesus and his sustaining power. The first thing you wanna do is tell other people about it. You wanna help other people get up out of their suffering. You wanna pass on the blessing to others who are hurting worse than you are. And that's the plight of millions of people with disabilities in Ukraine. And so when the Russian missile strikes began, we thought of those who were most vulnerable, of course, that's always people with disabilities, women and children, they're the ones who are often forgotten, left behind. It's always those with disabilities in a war that suffer the greatest, they're the most vulnerable, they are shell-shocked, exhausted, separated from families and friends. I mean, you got to imagine somebody in a wheelchair yeah. up on the fifth floor of an apartment building when the air sirens, uh, air raid sirens go off, it's not like they can jump out of bed and rush down the steps and quick go for the bomb shelter. No, they, they're stuck. And so we began working with our in-country partners in Ukraine to begin evacuating uh, a lot of these Ukrainians with disabilities. Um, we've evacuated uh, well over 340 uh, people with disabilities and their caregivers and our in-country partner, her name is Galina. Um, we're working, like I said, hard to get these people to safety in Poland. Yeah. But uh, the story doesn't stop there. Oh my goodness, once these people with disabilities come to Poland, then you're gonna find accessible, welcoming homes uh, for them. And so our ministry at Johnny and Friends is looking at some long-term care solutions Mm -hmm. uh, for these dear people. Oh, my heart goes out to them. Yeah. And I encourage all of our friends watching to be praying for our efforts. We will. And yeah, I've been watching Galena on your um, Instagram page and watching her updates from there. But I also watch you uh, on Johnny and Friends and you gave a little update. I mean, you've been on radio for like 40 years, but you're giving like a fresh coat of paint to your podcast, a fresh title. Well, you really do follow me on Instagram. Oh, I my do. goodness. <laughs> well, I've been doing radio for 40 years. I can't believe that. Mm. Like when I started, it was OK. So I'll probably run out of stuff to say after eight months. And here <laughs> I am 40 years later. But Sheila, like you, I continue to find my solace in the word of God. Yeah. Boy, if I had hands that could, I would press my Bible against me and take it to bed with me every night. I mean, I just eat the word of God. I drink it like Jesus said in John 6, you know, mm -hmm. he wants us uh, to look at him as though he were our, our, our flesh and blood. That you know, we, we drink him and we, we feast on him. And I, the word of God means everything. So I'm always learning new stuff. I'm, I'm experiencing new challenges. This, this battle with chronic pain has me on the front lines. And so uh, I still have lots to say. And actually, it's mostly about hope. What can I say? Heaven is not far beyond the horizon for us all. Yeah. And so I love sharing hope those hopeful messages in the word of God that help us put our own suffering here on earth in context. So the new title for the Johnny and Friends radio program is uh, Johnny Erickson Tata Sharing Hope. That's what I love to do. And if anybody has earned the right to share hope with authenticity, it is it's absolutely you. But just because I know some of our viewers are thinking this, why when you are paralyzed, why do you still experience such constant extreme pain? Well, you know, uh, I, I've heard it likened to people who have had amputated limbs. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a neuropathic pain that's hard to describe. Wow. Um, 
and, and so a, a lot of it is, is neuropathic. Sheila, to be quite honest, a lot of it is uh, degenerative disc disease, arthritis, and uh, I don't know how it is a quadriplegic can feel pain, but I do. Wow. And then again, I feel hungry, you know, <laughs> and, and then again, I can feel nauseous. So there are a lot of things going on on the inside that I can still feel. And unfortunately, pain happens to be one of them, yet it is that... Uh, I like to often call it a sheepdog snapping at my heels, driving me down the road to Calvary, where I know otherwise, Sheila, I would not be yeah. inclined to go. I really wouldn't. But pain is that which pushes me into the arms of Jesus. So it is a strange friend. It's a, it's a nasty, but you got to live with it, neighbor. Wow. You know, it, it, it's, it's a bruising of a blessing. But uh, a blessing, nevertheless, because it draws me closer to Jesus. So your book, um, great new version after 45 years. When you, when this book was first published, did you have any idea of how God was? I mean, it sold over five million copies. Oh my goodness, no way! I wrote that book. I wrote that book a little over what nine nine years out beyond my diving accident. What did I know back then? <laughs> but actually, um, the good thing about the Johnny book is that I did then, and I still now, uh, anchor myself to the Word of God. Yeah. And there are plenty of scriptures in those pages that uh, would help the reader uh, grapple with his own limitations with a godly perspective. But back then, uh, uh, never, ever would I have dreamed that we'd be sitting here talking about its 45th anniversary edition. Um, and I just don't know what would have happened had I not had that diving accident. I, I'd be on my second marriage. Maybe I'd be maxing out my credit cards. I'd be, I don't know what I'd be doing, but I, I know I wouldn't be delighting in the Lord Jesus and talking about him with you, Sheila. Mm -hmm. Well, I want every one of our viewers to get, even if you have a copy of this book, you don't have this copy, you don't have this new edition, these new photos and all this incredible, timeless, severe mercy wisdom. Um, but first of all, I'm going to tell you how you can get your own copy. But we also have a heart here for those who are struggling um, in all sorts of ways around the world. And we would love to invite our viewers to help us, as you have done before, but we're coming to you with a fresh call to help us once again. So please watch this, and then I'll let you know how you can get your own copy of Johnny, an unforgettable story. Life, carefree, nurturing, loving, secure universal needs for children and parents alike. Yet in many places of the world, such qualities are threatened every day by a simple and basic need, water. ตังปิตกหอบตักมุดเลกนะปราวปราหนังโดยอดครบครวนให้มันสะอาดติดตักมีนรอมทาโตจัดเธอจิมได้เก้อดมีนโดยทาปะมาตนเล้ามาคูบ
the life-saving solution of clean water is so incredibly simple. However, it's one we can only deliver with your help today. The suffering comes in so many different forms. You know, Johnny talked to us about the physical suffering and the pain that she endures every single day. But even as I watch that piece and I watch that mother, it's, there's something that's very fresh to me. And you know, a few, a few weeks ago, my son got very sick. He ate something and had a, an immediate severe allergic reaction to it. And I, I got him in the car, I drove a mile down the road and we're in the emergency room. And within no time at all, they're giving my son the medicine that he needs to save his life, to, to remove the pain. And when I was sitting, I, I sat with him in the dark through the night when he eventually fell asleep. And what was on my mind was all the stories that we bring to you of mothers in parts of the world where they don't have that option. That mother that we just saw would love to get in a car and go to the store and bring back fresh water, but she can't. This is the only water that she has access to. It's taken the life of her daughter. And, and then as you look at that precious little boy, now she's afraid for his life. And she feels guilty because she gave the water to her daughter, but it was all they had. Water for life, this mission is literally that. It's water so that they can live. Having been in so many of the nations, we work in over 20 nations bringing fresh water. And the, the difference it makes is, is night and day. You know, I've been to some of the villages where they're drinking literally the water that you just saw there. And I mean, it's like, as a mom, I can't imagine handing my child that thinking, this is all we have and you need water but I don't know if this is gonna kill you or not. We've got to do something about this. You know, you and I are the body of Christ on the earth at this moment. So we are responsible for what's going on at this moment. And we are committed at Life Today. We've been drilling wells for many, many years, but we have made a commitment to our partners who are on the ground right now to be able to drill 350 new wells in over 20 nations. Now, how that breaks down, we have a very efficient system for about $4,800. That will drill a well in a village and literally provide clean water for about a thousand people for their lifetime. The average life of the well is about 70 years. Some of you can do that and have done it before and you can do it again. Some of you can't do that, but if we all do what we can do, we can change this. If you are able to give $48, that will provide 10 people with clean water for life. $144, clean water for 30 people. So please, let's do something. And when you give any gift at all, say, I want to read Johnny's book. I want to learn how to, how to stand strong in the midst of suffering. But even as we stand strong, let's reach out to those who are suffering and let's do it now. Please call, please just give the best gift you can and let's bring hope, as Johnny talked about, to those who need it so badly. Thank you. Across the globe, hundreds of thousands of lives are lost each year to waterborne disease, and nearly half of those are children under the age of five. Through Mission Water for Life, you can give mothers hope and children a future as we provide clean, life-giving water for thousands of children and their families before it's too late. With your gift today, you can help drill and establish 350 water wells this year your gift of $24 will help provide clean water for five children. A gift of $48 will help provide for 10, $72 will provide for 15, and $144 will help provide life-giving water for 30 people for a lifetime. With your gift of any amount, we'll send you the God's Daily Promise devotional set. These four seasonal devotionals each contain a daily scripture, inspirational message, and room to journal your prayers and insights from God's Word. With your gift of $100 or more, please request the Faith, Hope, and Love Coaster Set 
All four beautiful sandstone coasters come in an elegant natural wood holder and artistically display the words of 1 Corinthians 13.13. 13. Finally, please consider a gift of $1,200 to help provide water for 250 people or a gift of $4,800 to help sponsor a complete well and you may request our inspiring bronze sculpture, Let the Children Come. Please call, write, or make your gift online. Thank you so much. And remember, for any gift at all, we want to send you this remarkable book. Next week, Johnny, you're going to be celebrating, you and your darling husband, Ken, are going to be celebrating a very special anniversary. Yep, my 40th wedding anniversary. Wow. I cannot believe Ken, Ken Tata and I will be married four decades next week. And oh my goodness, are we going to be celebrating? Oh. And you know, Sheila, real quickly, uh, people ask me, what's the success of a 40-year marriage? Yeah where you and your husband just, just you know, think the world of each other. We have been reading through the Bible every year for more than 17 years. And if Ken were here beside me right now, he's down at the supermarket, um, he, he would tell you it's the Word of God. Wow. It's those anchors in the Word yeah. of God. So I'm very grateful for uh, the fact that Jesus has uh, given us great joy for wow. 40 years. What's your website where people can c connect with you and not just connect with you, but can help you and support your work? Thank you for asking that. It's at johnnyandfriends.org. That's J-O-N-I uh, and friends.org. And you can watch lots of videos about our retreats for people with disabilities all around the world. We take wheelchairs and Bibles to needy disabled people, and you'll get updates on Ukraine. And I'm going to ask some of your viewers to volunteer with us. We're going to be holding 36 family retreats this summer across the U.S. Wow. We need lots of help. So Come on and volunteer with us. Okay, you heard it, people. You, it will be life-changing for you. Dear friend, thank you so much for being with us. Tell Ken when he gets back from the supermarket that we love him too. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks for having me on, Sheila, and thank blessings you. to all of our viewers. Thank you. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you next time on Live Today. Next week on Life Today, Emmy-nominated actor, comedian, and pastor, Kel Mitchell, helps you find the blessings in your life. Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without